Oh. Uh, hey. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, 3D cat. Whoa. Oh, yep, yep, but it's working. <laughs> oh my God, wait, that's crazy. Wow. This is insane. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> is it like 3D without 3D glasses? It's really bad. Yeah, I don't like it. It's possibly because I'm very old. It, ha it suffers from the same problem that 3D film does and that it's distracting. I have so many questions right now that range from like, why? Why indeed? Why would you put 3D on a phone? I think I know why. It's fun, it's cool, it's weird, and <laughs> it's kind of awesome. What it is is this regular 2D screen, and underneath it, they have this nano light technology, and it makes things appear 3D. And that's why if I'm looking at Instagram, which is a 2D app, it looks 2D, but if I go to Holopix, an app by Red, I see all my photos in 3D. Pretty cool. And just remember this video you're watching is in 2D and any of the images from the phone will not be in 3D. With 3D, what's interesting is as soon as you mention it, this little filter goes off in people's mind because I don't know if anyone's ever seen truly good 3D. I know I haven't. Now, if I said, hey, take a look at this picture of my cat and it's a 2D photo, no matter how good it was, if she's doing something cute, you'd be like, oh, cute cat. But if I showed you a 3D photo of my cat, all of a sudden you start becoming aware that you're looking at a 3D photo, you start not only looking at the cat, but you're looking at all the imperfections or the differences that a 3D photo does. And I think that's the biggest hurdle we have with 3D right now. This gets pretty close. There's a times where I'm watching a clip from the Pixar movie Brave and she's shooting an arrow. There's a thing called the hydrogen network, which I can look at videos and I can rent movies that are done in 3D. There's this Leia app, uh, like the princess, and it allows me to play 3D video games, which is pretty cool. There's a thing called Holopix, which allows, it's kind of like a 3D Instagram. And not on here yet, but a demo I had was for a video messaging app that was in 3D. And that is pretty cool, I think. So let's talk about these cameras. So right now, on the back, you have a dual rear camera and a dual rear camera on the front. Now, if you take a close look at the dual rear cameras in the back, and you look at them compared to something like the iPhone or uh, a Galaxy phone, or pretty much any phone with dual rear cameras, you're gonna notice one difference off the bat is they're further apart than other dual cameras. That's how they're able to capture 3D video and 3D photos. Also, they're the same camera. Like one's not telephoto, one's not black and white. They do the exact same thing and they're paired stereoscopically. But as far as pictures on this, uh, when I take a picture, they look pretty good. I, I like the way they look. They don't have the digital perfection of a Pixel 3 photo or even the smart HDR on an iPhone. They have more of a kind of a, an analog film quality. So if I was to take a picture on an old camera and got the film developed, they look more natural because of that. And I like that. Take a look at these photos I took of my friend Becca. This is using the portrait mode on this phone and it looks pretty good. Look, you kind of had one job, Red. You guys do amazing cinema video. And video out of here in daylight looks pretty good. But it's very cropped in, especially 4K. Um, it's noisy. It's a little soft, especially if I compare it to something like the iPhone video. Again, um, the iPhone is designed to just shoot that video out. It's gonna look great just as is. But I could take these video files and using an app on this phone and try to clean them up. I just don't have that app yet. So when I look at the videos, I'm a little disappointed. Even in slow motion, ah, oh, slow motion's like 720 at 120 frames per second. Very sad, Patrick. I just wanted really good video. However, that's not the full end of the story. Part of the reason you're buying this phone is because of these little copper pogo pens. And that's gonna be for modules, and there's two that we know that are coming out. One's gonna be a battery module, and the other is going to be a cinema camera module, which has a larger sensor and even has a lens mount, so you can put on a Canon lens, or you can put on an Icon lens, or whatever lens you want. And when that comes on, then we're gonna really truly see the true cinema power in this camera. But out of my pocket, without that module, 
It's okay at video. It's not horrible. So let's talk about it as a phone. It's big, it's made of aluminum. It's probably about the size of a Razer phone too. However, if this thing is built, is like built like a camera. It just feels nice and dense and solid. It's more solid and dense than pretty much any phone I can remember picking up. And I like that feel. Uh, it has Kevlar in the back, it's got a headphone jack, has a 5.7 inch display and the colors look nice. Even when it's not in 3D, uh, it's a very nice bright display. Perhaps my favorite feature on here is the giant 4,500 milliamp hour battery. This thing lasted around 14 hours in our battery test, which is really good. In its existing form, I think the 3D is really neat. I am entertained by it. I love that aha moment when I show it to people for the first time. However, the thing that's so frustrating is I have no one to share this content with. I can't send it to my dad or brother because they don't have a red hydrogen phone. I can't send it to coworkers who don't have one either. And right now that's the biggest limit is getting that 3D content out someplace. But if you've been watching this video and any part of it's been like, that's pretty cool, I would kind of dig that, then you should definitely go check this phone out. But if you've watched this whole video and you're still asking why, this phone is probably not for you.